What's yeah. the first project you ever did? Do you remember? The first project I could say would probably be a field recording project. You know, they kind of start you slow. And then like the, the main project was a Back to the Future scene, uh, re, uh, resound design of that. So I think it's the opening scene actually. With all the clocks and stuff? Yeah, all the clocks and like the robotic arm and all and that. And he picks up the guitar and- He picks up the guitar and he, he gets blown back and falls. So it's a, it's a lot going on in that scene. So it was really, you know, hard, but it, it was really cool. You know, really good practice for a first time. Um, it really, you know, pushed me towards wanting to go in that direction. You know, starting something from scratch and seeing how it comes out to, at the end. In terms of the, of the couple of projects that you sent that you did in Audio Design S, was I was just blown away. The detail, the, the levels, the whole thing, the, it just really brought those sequences to life. My approach was for the first one, I was using the demo. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna go in here and try to push it to its limits, you know, see what the demo has as far as sounds and try to, you know, recreate uh, this video I found off of Vimeo. You know, first I start off with, you know, kind of what I'm seeing on the screen. You know, I take it not really frame by frame, but kind of like part by part. And I kind of just go in, add the foundation, move on, add the foundation. Then I'll go back, watch it. Add, add little details if I can see it and, you know, just keep going back. I do like to start with the, you know, hard effects. I kind of add fully at the end because, you know, that I think those are, you know, the minor details. Like if someone's reaching into their pocket, you know, the cloth. My second one, I, I had the um, subscription, so I had all the sounds I needed. So it was just really easy to go in and just type in a sound that I needed it put it in so um, just really wanted to push its limits and see what audio design desk can do compared to pro tools and um, it was really easy really refreshing actually i really enjoyed using it for those two projects and those are just uh resound designs that i did what are your kind of main tools these days well honestly ever since you know you know audio design desk i've been using that for uh most of the things i do now uh you know pro tools for mixing but you know, audio design does for, you know, placing sounds and, you know, getting everything in there right now. Pro Tools, not trying to bash Pro Tools, but, you know, you have to spot sounds, you know, it takes, it's really tedious, you know, it, it takes a longer time. But with audio design does, you know, you could, your, your library is right there too. So you don't have to, you know, drag sounds in from Soundly or anything like that. You can kind of just, it's right there, boom, put it in type of thing. So it just it's just really fast. Everything's there that you need. What would you say to like, of you know young sound designers people who were like right before you did that back to the future project first don't get overwhelmed you, you can get, really get overwhelmed and get stuck on a part you know just trying to get everything in there you want to get a foundation first and then go back in and add like the tiny details you know the volume automation you know the, the effects and all that type of stuff so take it one thing at a time and kind of learn how to move on and then go back if you need to do you know what's next for you continue to build up my portfolio and you know reach out to people you know i'm fresh out of college just graduated actually a few weeks ago so awesome well i really appreciate you taking the time and talking to us about uh you know what you do you're so good you're so talented just so you know Krispy cream is giving free dozens to graduates <laughs> oh really i love Krispy cream all right i'm about to make a trip there after this call <laughs>